You may have noticed we do a lot of bowing around here. You may wonder, why do we bow down? Why do we want to show, much, show so much respect for the Buddha and his teachings? It's because they teach us to respect things that are worthy of respect within ourselves. They teach us to respect our desire for true happiness. As if the rest of the world doesn't teach us that. The rest of the world says, okay, get what you can out of the material world. Get what you can out of the world of society, instead of status, money, whatever. And don't hope for anything more than that. But the Buddha says there is something more that we human beings can find if we dig down deep enough inside. And he left behind the instructions, he left behind the examples for us to respect that desire within ourselves for true happiness. That means all the other things within ourselves that are good. We respect to the extent to which they can bring true happiness. Like our intelligence is a good thing if it brings true happiness. If our intelligence is used to destroy ourselves or destroy other people, or just to get ahead. Getting ahead means somebody else has to get behind. And that sort of thing is not worthy of respect. So we want to show our respect and our gratitude to those who have taught us the true values of life. And John Fuing used to say, respect is a sign of intelligence. If you're going to learn something from someone, you show them respect. If you don't show them respect, they're not going to be willing to share what they have with you, or they'll share grudgingly, and not in full measure. I guess I see that you don't appreciate what they've given, so why, do I, why would they want to give anything more? And so a sign of an intelligent person is the amount of respect you show to other people. Now, when they give you things, when they give you advice, it's up to you to take the advice or not. But you don't show disrespect just because you don't like the advice. So when you look at your intelligence, you just realize, okay, intelligence is good up to a certain point and for certain things. But if you don't use it well, it can destroy you. The same with all the other goods of life. They're good to the extent to which they lead to true happiness, to which you can use them for the sake of true happiness. True happiness is a happiness that doesn't harm you, it doesn't harm anybody else. Of course, that has to be found inside. This is where you really have to apply your intelligence, really have to apply all your abilities. It's figuring out why is the mind so prone to create, creating suffering, even though it doesn't want to suffer, and yet it keeps creating suffering over and over again. We may blame the world outside for our sufferings, but it's really the problem comes from within. The conditions of the world simply are the way they are. But our mind is creating suffering for itself, and you want to know why. You have to look deeply inside. And again, this is one of the reasons why we bow down to the Buddha, because he gave us the tools to do this. He experimented all kinds of different ways practically died in the experimentation. When he finally found the way, he didn't charge any money. He freely gave it to anybody who was interested because of his true compassion. That's the kind of person that's worthy of respect. So if we have any intelligence, we want to keep these thoughts in mind and act on them so that our intelligence will be useful for things that are really useful and not destroy us, and so that our desire for happiness really will lead to happiness. A happiness that's true. A happiness that's harmless. The happiness that's really worthy of respect.